Hello everyone, it's Allison from Determined to Shine, where we use the magic formula, of course, of creativity, spiritual connection, and community to bring forth joy in our lives. I am so excited because I am finally today resuming what is now my 2021 <laughs> instead of 2020 um, deck collection and declutter series. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel since I launched this series last year, it's based on a series of videos done by um, both Don Michelle at Boho Tarot and Lisa Papaza of Supportive Tarot. And basically, I'm just going through my entire collection of tarot and oracle decks, category by category, showing you all the decks I have. And then at the same time, just taking a look to see if there's anything I maybe don't need because... If I'm being honest, I have like I have a whole lot of decks. Like I don't I don't even know how many it is. And um I am currently in the process of moving and I will be sharing more about that in coming videos. But um if I have ever been aware of how many decks I have, it is today. <laughs> so it is now in this moving. So today I just wanted to dive in to a fun category for me, which is ocean and mermaid decks. These are just two of them. I have a whole big stack right here. So without further ado, let's dive in. So my first deck to show you is the Whispers of the Ocean Oracle Cards by Angela Hartfield and with artwork by Ekaterina Golovanova. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Uh, I feel confident in Ekaterina. I'm not as sure about the other. So this deck is um, published by Blue Angel Publishing. So you get that standard box size from them with the kind of loose cards and larger guidebook. Um, this is a newer release. So the cards are matte, which is great. A lot of my Blue Angel decks have really glossy cards. And the guidebook is beautiful. Gosh, 2019, it's a newer release, I said. Oh, time flies in a pandemic, friends. So basically, um, you know, we've got an introduction here, um, how to use the cards, a couple of spreads, and then just straight into the card meanings. You get a photo of the card, keyword, a little message, which I believe is the same message that is on the card, and then an extended message as well. And so, yeah, that's kind of, that's the story on the guidebook. And then let's look at the cards. So this is the card back. It matches, of course, the cover art. It's super beautiful. Um, I love the ocean. I love everything about the ocean. So um, it was not surprising to me as I was pulling apart my decks that, you know, I had some animal decks and I had some fantastical creatures decks in terms of fairies and other decks that will be coming up. But mermaids and ocean, I had enough for a whole category. So let's take a look. So um, these are just really, they're just pretty cards. I really love this deck. I'd like to edge it at some point. Um, I don't use it as much as I should. Like, oh, look how gorgeous this is. The light of the moon. A full moon can shine light on what you have been resisting. This can be anything from your fears to your soul's beauty. This is gorgeous and just totally speaks to me right now. Uh, full moon was last night. I was up very late in um, ritual and meditation. I actually had a really powerful experience I'll be talking about again in another video soon. And uh, that just sings to me. Here's, of course, those sea turtles. That image is used quite a lot, resilience. Um, so obviously you can see it's a very uh, blue-green color palette, except for sometimes we do see brighter colors in the corals and some of the other sea creatures that are out there. Oh, I love this, replacing what was lost, like rejuvenation, of course, a starfish is great for that. I know I'm going super quickly, but I have like a whole lot of decks to show you and I am going to try to not make this video an hour long. I make no promises. We'll see. Breakthrough to new dimensions. A new endeavor is on the horizon. Innovative energy wants to burst forth into your consciousness. Uh, again, right where I'm at right now. I love that like the cards speak even for a moment if all I'm doing is flipping through and sharing with them. 
I may keep this deck out for myself for the month of April. It feels like um, I'm going to need a lot of like flow energy in my life um, as I face kind of moving around and launching some new things for Determined to huh, Shine. And um, yeah, just really like, oh, clearing the excess, clearing away the clutter. That's what I'm doing in the videos and in my life. So, okay. Uh, Whispers of the Ocean is definitely a keep. As I mentioned, I do like to evaluate each deck in my collection and decide if I should let any of them go. Um, I love all the decks I have, but sometimes the decks I have, um, either I'm done working with them or I ended up with something similar and I just don't need multiple decks that look all the same. So we'll just see what we what we encounter. The next deck is Myths and Mermaids by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. This is another Blue Angel deck. So we once again have large guidebook with the smaller cards. A uh, very standard oracle card size. I feel like this is kind of the standard size in the industry. Um, we do have, of course, in the guidebook very similar. I think just a little bit of introductory material and then straight into the card messages. You do get um, a picture of the card with the um, like card title. You get a nice little poem, a description of the card, a message from the card, and then, um, you know, just the antithesis of the card. Um, so I just really like and I'm not sure if that's a like reversed meeting or what I'd have to look further back and see. Um, so standard guidebook there, but um, they always feel kind of nice. Um, I did edge this stack in some pastel colors. I believe I used Crayola markers for this one. Um, and it's actually kind of hard to see. There you go. Um, I might've used those like sparkly highlighters too. I'm not really sure. I did it a while ago. Um, but I really like the pastel edging and I think, I can't remember if I did it to match the card border or if I just did it. I don't remember. So anyway, this is the card back. So it looks like that. And then let's look at the cards. This is one of those decks where like you have, um, some horizontal and some vertical. I don't love that, but it is pre-existing art by Jasmine Beckett Griffith that was compiled for the deck, so that does happen. Okay, so Mermaid with Butterflies, uh, Stardust Angel, I love that. There's another Sea Chariot, Golden Mermaid, Triumph of Galatea, Absinthe Mermaid. So I've always really liked this deck. Um, it was a gift from someone special to me, which makes it, you know, even more powerful. I always think anytime something is a gift that is part of your spiritual practice, it kind of like adds a little bit of magic to the, the magic that's already in the cards or the crystal or whatever it may be. Um, Remained with a golden dragon. Big blue whale. So, um, for some reason in this moment, it's not singing to me as much as it normally does. So this card haunts me. Like I will tell you if there's a trilobite in a deck, it'll stalk me in any animal deck. I don't know what that is. Um, but I do love her art and I am a bit of a completionist when it comes to her decks. I have almost all of them. So I don't think I'll let this go right now. Again, it was a very special gift and, um, Ugh, really is beautiful. And at the, at certain times in my life, this deck is like just what I need. And, um, again, I feeling like I'm going to need some flow energy in my life. So, um, we will see what that brings up. This, this is really calling to me right now. So I'm actually just gonna just do a mini reading here. Cause of course I am in the middle of a deck collection video. Why wouldn't I friends? We're just going to see what the guidebook says about this microcosm seascape here because I'm just really digging all of it from the stuff in her hair to what she's holding like this is something about this is singing to me right now so let's see what the guidebook says all right so there is a little poem storm is a bruin or the quay ships a tossing out at sea dark and dreary nimbus cloud forms a hand and heavy shroud forms a hard and heavy shroud 
Oh, what turmoil rocks the waves, threatening men with early graves, but I can watch without alarm, and I know this scene means me no harm. Wide-eyed mermaid with ivy-draped hair holds in her arms, arms a glass orb, enclosing a miniature seascape. Yatta, yatta, yatta. Okay. Um, interesting. Divination message is out of harm's way. It says, you may bear witness to a traumatic event, but do not fear. You are safe. Although upsetting, upcoming turmoil is removed enough from your person that you will not suffer directly. When the storm arrives, you may feel powerless, but accept there is nothing you can do. Some things are outside of your control, and you simply have to stand by and watch them transpire. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I don't really know what to do with that, other than I think that, um, you know, maybe that's just how I've been feeling about COVID, honestly. Um, because, of course, like so many of us, I've... Um, been so impacted by COVID and yet not at all, right? In my immediate world. So um, I think this is just a reminder that um, you know, we don't always have to be part of the storm. We can allow the storm to exist like storms come into our lives, into the world. We don't always have to let them destroy our inner peace. So that's what I'm going to take from that card today anyway. Um, and I am going to keep this deck. So um, but, oh, very interesting message. Anyway, moving right along. We're only two decks in. It's 11 minutes in. Oh, goodness. Okay, here we go. This is the Tarot Sirene. This is made by the Wandering Oracle. And this is a Marseille deck. Um, it looks like the cards are a little bit bowed, which is a bummer. I can't remember if they came like that or if that's just happened over time. Uh, really cool metallic backs. Um... And then you're going to see standard Marseille imagery, of course, on the pips. It is a pip deck, um, and as most Marseille decks are. Um, I got this when I went on a bit of a Marseille deck kick um, last summer after doing uh, Tom Benjamin's uh, Tarot de Marseille class um, as part of Ethany's Tarot Readers Academy. And then I just, like, there were, like, three months where all I bought was Marseille decks, and then I was a little bit over it after that. But I do still enjoy them. And this is probably my favorite Marseille deck because it is very traditional in the pips, and I think that's important when you're learning to read Marseille. But it has this, like, fun mermaidy twist, and, you know, I don't love historical-looking decks. I like whimsy and magic and color and... Yay, mermaids and rainbows and unicorns and manatees. Barbara, manatees. Sorry, if you know that reference, uh, five points for you. Five points to Gryffindor. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so Tarot Sirene. That is my favorite Marseille. Cute little mermaid deck. Um, this is in an independent deck. Um, I am going to keep it. I think it's adorable. And um, I may show it to you again when I get to my Marseille deck video. I might not. We'll see how it goes. All right, we're not doing great on the declutter. It's all right. This was going to be a hard category for me. Okay, this is Karen Kay's messages from The Mermaids. I can tell you right now, this deck is absolutely not going anywhere. This is a Hay House deck, and it's probably my favorite Hay House release of like the last, I don't know, five years, something crazy, especially for oracles that are like this size. You know, they've done a couple, sorry this size. They've done a couple specialty decks that are really pretty, but this deck just sings to me, and the messages I get from it are spot on every time. Um, I edged it with blue and green glitter markers, and I love that effect. Um, guidebook is kind of standard Hay House fare. You get the introductory material, picture, message, deeper message, right? Okay. Um, here's the cards. Oh, here's the card back. Beautiful shells. La la la. I, you guys, I think I might be in a little bit of a weird headspace today. I'm <laughs> feeling like a little bit silly. So, sorry, not sorry. Letting go. Oh, so beautiful. Okay, so I love this deck, like, a lot. I love the art. I love the guidebook, though I don't always use it. I don't need it. I love, love that this is a mermaid deck with diversity. Let me tell you how often you never, ever see that, both in race and body size. 
we are not dealing with all skinny, blonde haired, fair haired mermaids. Like here's one, but you know, they're not all, here's another one. Okay. I'm getting a little better here. Oh my goodness. Right after I say that they all go blonde, right? Okay. This is funny, but like, I just love that there's so much different energy in each of these cards that you really can get, um, just some more powerful messages, right? Like when, when the cards all look like you or when the cards all don't look like you, it's a lot harder to find diversity in not just the images, but in the messages that come, come to us, right? Like there's a reason diversity is so valuable in decks, but also of course in our lives. And that's what we turn to the cards for, to get out of our heads. And so, you know, as a blonde haired white girl, actually I'm a purple haired white girl at the moment. Like I am, I will admit that I am more often in the case that everyone looks like me in a deck than no one. But I think it's so important that there's diversity across the board so everybody can find themselves in the deck and everybody can also find other messages in the deck. So this deck is not going anywhere. It is a favorite. It's one of my favorite oracles. It's the one I like to travel with. I use this one at our Determined to Shine retreats quite a bit. Um, this is really speaking to me right now. Again, in the process of moving, shedding clutter, moving forward some from just some things that have been haunting me for a long time, if I'm just being really real about it. Like, I'm on the... Like, I'm getting ready for a new cycle of the fool's journey. Like, I'm, I'm just ready to go, right? Stepping into my wild unknown, but with more wisdom than before, perhaps. But any rate, I love this deck. If I could only keep 10 Oracle decks ever, I might include this one. Um, I've given it as a gift like six or seven times. It's, it's a favorite. Um, it's just so beautiful. Um, interestingly enough, Karen Kay also released a fairy deck. Um just a few months before the, that one and uh, before this one. And that deck didn't resonate with me at all. Like I kept it and moved it along almost immediately, or I had purchased it and I moved it along almost immediately. And that, I think it was just the art style or something just felt off. But this message is from the mermaid, two thumbs up. Okay, moving right along. I have how many left? I don't know, a few. Okay, this is the Salt and Sea Energy deck by Rachel Rubino. This was a deck that I saw on Instagram one day, and I believe it was in the midst of the pandemic when I was, if I'm just being honest, buying everything in sight, um, because I, I just was. It was in a pandemic shopping, and um, I've been pretty happy with it. I haven't used it a ton, but I've liked the readings I've done. So here's the card back. Um, I love that it has the moon you know, kind of among the waves. And a lot of the cards have that same kind of imagery. So we get the images of the cards are like on this kind of uh, whitewashed, like, you know, deck, uh, like, or boardwalk type thing. So, um, and there's, is there a guidebook? There is not really a guidebook. It's just the cards with the messages. So, which is fine. Um, I love this you know, and so it's not, I don't know. I'm just evaluating this deck now. I've shown it before. I showed it in a favorites video a long time ago, I think, or maybe in a chakra decks. I don't know. I showed it in a video. I love this. I'm pretty sure inner child. And this deck for me is kind of interesting as I'm evaluating it now. Um, I still really like it. And I love the like soft vibes because it really feels um, just very gentle, um, which is not always the energy of the ocean, right? Sometimes the ocean roars. Sometimes the ocean is slow and floaty and healing. Um, but it just reminds me of a beach vacation. I feel like it just everything about it just reminds me of a beach vacation in all the best ways. Uh, love the manatee. Oh, look, it's time to let go and move on. What's holding you back? Are you guys seeing this this theme for me? It's like every card I stop on. Is like, let go, let go, move on, move on. Um, but yeah, I think it's a pretty neat deck. I like that this mermaid um, is the statue. I think it fits with the, same with this Poseidon card. I like the way it kind of fits with the photographic style of the deck. Sea glass, low tide. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to keep this. I'd like to work with it a little longer. I think some of these cards could be really cool for um, some path working, which is kind of when you um, just take a little bit of a journey into the card. Um, and I think there's a lot of like really great energy here for me to work with. I also think that some of these could be great for meditation and things like that. So this deck will also be going with me to my new home. Look at that. We are not doing much decluttering. If I'm being real, you guys, I'm probably not getting rid of any of these. There's like maybe two, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, next up is Dame Darcy's Mermaid Tarot. Um, this is a pretty popular deck on um, YouTube, Instagram, etc. So you may have seen it before. Um, it's an independent release from Dame Darcy. You can get it on Etsy. Um, here is the card back. And here are the card fronts. It's kind of chunky. Like it's got this gold, it's kind of matte gold edging, which is pretty sweet. Um, and the cards are matte, but they're, it's kind of, it's kind of a chonky deck. And it's got this really cool, like, vintage vibe to it. Um, I've thought about doing a deeper deck study with this deck. Like, I have some, um, I actually love this Hierophant. I have some time coming up as I move. Um, you know, once I'm in my new place, I'm kind of allowing into my schedule, more time for deck study and my spiritual practice and I'll have everything in one place finally um and I, this is uh, kind of up for consideration for my in some ways my first time like spending a significant amount of time with the same deck look at this seven of wands like I'm a girl who likes to bounce around decks and I really want to spend some time like journaling and diving in deep to a deck. So this is one of my contenders. Um, I'm loving this Justice card. Justice is my card of the year for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, I actually calculated my card of the year multiple ways. It was Justice in every instance and I did like a blind draw and pulled it. So the universe was clear. So I may pull that Justice card out because I was really digging it. I love this sun as well. Um, so yeah, look at this chariot. Mm, yeah, this might be the deck. And I've got this like ocean themed journal that's just waiting for some magic inside. So that's great. So um, here is, you can get a guidebook and then just a uh, photo card that also came with it. So that is Dame Darcy's Mermaid Tarot. Obviously not getting rid of it since I am considering, um, you know, using it for the deck study. So love it. Okay. Next up. Um, so this is one of my very favorite decks ever. And in terms of you know, getting to know a deck or a deep deck study. This is the deck in my collection that I know the best. This is like my ride or die. And this is the Mermaid Tarot by Lisa Robertson. Um, it is edged um, with a like deep teal color. And I have spent many, many hours with this amazing deck. Um, I love the art style. It has this, like, I've heard people describe this as almost a Disney-esque vibe, and I understand where that comes from, but to me, it's like, there's a little more depth than that in it for me, and when you get to the guidebook, the messages are very, um, they're just spot on, they're intense, like this deck, it, you know, do not be fooled, this deck, um, can look gentle. This is one of my favorite fool cards ever. Um, reminds me of Rapunzel for some reason, which is funny because, of course, Rapunzel is not going to be coming out of the ocean. But it's like Rapunzel cosplaying Ariel or something. I don't know. Um, but I love this deck. It, it it pulls punches. It tells it to me like it is. I have been given enormous comfort by this deck and I have also had my butt kicked by this deck oh especially that guy um, but I just I 
it's always right. It's always what I need. I love that there's still really solid fire energy in a water-based deck. That's very hard to do sometimes. Same with this kind of airy feeling in the swords. Um, yeah, I love it. It's like I said, it's my ride or die. It's probably my favorite deck. Um, ah, that's, that's hard to say, you know, I have so many, but it is the deck I know the best and the deck that knows me the best and the deck that I turn to when I'm hurt or when I'm like, I need an answer and I need to like not get confused. I need to be able to understand what the cards are telling me. And I just love, I love this. Um, and I do think this deck is made a little more magical because, um, it is created by Lisa Robertson, who is um, one half of the team at High Magic Divination with Pamela Chen. And I've taken many of their programs and I feel like, you know, a personal connection to Lisa because she is one of my mentors and teachers and she herself has been willing to kick my ass. So sometimes when I read the guidebook, I like feel like I can hear her in my head, which is funny. But anyway, obviously keeping that. Okay. Oh, I, I lost my Hello Kitty water creature here because, of course, I have that. Okay, Oracle of the Mermaids. This is a Lucy Cavendish deck, and let's take a look. This is another Blue Angel, so we're going to have the same guidebook card style here. Um, this is one of the ones I'm, like, willing to consider parting with or, like, because, you know, this is my third large Blue Angel mermaid -y deck, in this category. So I, if it feels similar, we're going to take a look, but the guidebook, I don't know. It always feels different to me and Lucy Cavendish is so magical. So I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want to get rid of anything, but we'll see if I need to, because I'm moving. Come on. Okay. Um, here we have a, a lovely mermaid creature as our card back. Um, I have not edged this. This deck could really benefit from a trim, though I feel that way about almost every Blue Angel deck with these borders, these borders, like, why? Just let them go. Um, I don't always mind card borders really at all, but I like it when they're part of the design versus just like an arbitrary container. Anyway, this vulnerability card is pretty intense, actually. So let's see what else we have. Okay, so already <laughs> this deck feels really different to me, and I'm remembering it now. I haven't played with this deck in, like, probably a year or so, if I'm being honest. And I'm like, oh, this is my shadowy mermaid deck. I forgot. Mmm, yeah, this isn't going anywhere. I, mmm, this just sings to my soul right now. These cards, you guys, this is why I love... I love cards because I love art and I love spirituality and I love the ocean and I love mythology and I love little dolphins and I love Aphrodite and Aphrodite has been showing up for me a lot lately and she was the first goddess I connected with as a child and it's very much felt like a return to that energy so when I just see this card I just feel like I it stops me in my tracks so I'm actually going to set that aside because I need to spend some time with that um off screen. I, I won't do another card reading in the middle here, but, um, yeah, this is like, there's some, there's some shadow work available in this deck. Um, and I think it's, it's powerful. It's beautiful. And like, honestly, anything like Lucy Cavendish does, I just really love her work. Oh, love this Atlantis card. This is great. Um, so I'm probably not gonna be able to get rid of this because it's awesome. This, this is a case right here of, I'm like, oh, maybe I can get rid of that, that deck. It's because I forgot. I forgot what it's like. This is really exciting. Seashell divination. I actually just got a set of runes made out of seashells. So I might play with that. That's not, I think what this is calling for, but still, why not? I get time and space to explore my practice in some new ways, but, um, yeah, this deck has some deep truth in it and I can, it's, it's almost buzzing in my hands. Like I've talked about how some decks feel really intense to me when they have strong messages for me or when they just hold really powerful energy. And that is what is happening with this. So keeping it in my collection. 
Okay. There are two more, and these are the ones where when I saw them side by side, because they were in different parts of my space, I was like, mm, I don't know that I'm going to need to keep both of these. And so these are both um, kind of these like mini decks that have become super popular. So we'll start with Magical Messages from the Mermaids, because this is also Lucy Cavendish, so it kind of goes well with the one I just showed. So this is 55 healing offerings from the Elementals of Water. Now, it's a little bit deceiving because the cards are little bitty in this box. So when you find this box, and there's a couple cards in here that are like instructional. I might even just put those like underneath that thing there. But when you see this in the store, if you haven't done if you haven't watched any videos or anything, you might be disappointed when you see that this is what you get. Um, I knew this is what I was getting, so I was fine with that, but um, I have known other people to be disappointed. Um, the card backs are all the same. And one thing I think is weird is like they, they aren't rounded and they're like, I mean, it. I guess this is decent cardstock, but they feel really papery to me. So the idea here is that these are just magical messages to pull. And when I started getting these, um, you know, I don't know, again, mermaids, Lucy Cavendish, love her. So I just kind of got them and I haven't really used it much. I thought they might be neat for like Instagram or even little messages next to cards. I say Instagram, like I published on Instagram yesterday for the first time in like five years, six years. I think the last post was like 2016. So I'm back on Instagram, but I think it's funny that I made it sound like that was a thing I do. Anyway, so like Mermaid Song. To hear the song of the mermaids is a gift, one given to those embarking on a new voyage. This song is a sign you are free to begin. The future opens up before you, fresh and fulfilling. How surprising that's the one I choose to read out loud because you're starting something new. You're letting go of everything while you start your something new. So we've got dolphins and whale messages. Our friends, the whales call to you. I, I don't know. I like these, but um, they're not singing to me right now. Water energy. So water shows energy so clearly, but you human child cannot see the rippling waves of energy all about you. You have been sent energy and the ripple effect is profound. You have touched many lives. Believe in your power. Oh, that's beautiful, right? But I'm not really sure how I would use these. Waves of joy. Like, I, I like these, but I don't know what it can offer me that I'm not already getting from my other mermaid decks. You know, especially because some of these kinds of messages are already in the other deck from... Lucy. So at the moment, I am not feeling this one. I think I'm going to let this go. Um, I also thought about saving them for art projects because, you know, I kind of roll that way. But even then, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about this. But I think I am either going to rehome this or put it in my supply of art supplies for mermaid themed magical items like I could use these in the if I do the deep study with the other mermaid deck I might use these somewhere and that could be cool but I think these are not going to stay in my collection as a like divinatory deck to pull from so okay that's like one 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 deck to release into the world or just into my art supplies which means I'm not getting rid of it at all but what are you gonna do Okay, and part of the reason I feel like I can say that is because I have this other jet deck, which is Sea Melodies by Jessica Lee. This one is published by US Games. This is from Blue Angel. I should have mentioned that. This has a magnetic box, and the instructions are right here in the how to use the cards. Um, these ones do have all the same back. Not all the little decks from US Games do, but these ones do, but she's very cute. But I like these messages a lot more. And that's part of why, like, I knew this was in here when I was thinking about the two decks. So, like, 
if you're pulling from these, um, I think they're back in alphabetical order. <laughs> um, you know, you can see that like, you're still pulling a keyword with a message like chance, allow the sea to wash its chest of wonders ashore. You never know what the tide might bring in. Choose wisely, be discerning. You don't have to keep everything in your net. Holy cow. That's important, you guys, like, because we are all carrying all kinds of crap we don't need to be carrying, like, physical stuff, but emotional stuff and all kinds of things. And so, like, these cards to me, I think this is what I wanted from this. And I've had this one longer than this. I just actually got this, like, I just opened it a couple of days ago. Um, which is why it was still in order as well. But I think this deck is much more, um, like I can use it more like an oracle or I can use it alongside a tarot reading. Like I can see myself. I mean, let's, do, let's just see what it looks like. You know, I love playing with deck pairings. Um, that's a really fun uh, set of videos going around. Um, perfect pairs, hashtag perfect pairs, if you're looking around the tarot community for readings. So, like, you know, I mean, these might be fun together. I don't know. The color palette's not a super great match, but whatever. I thought it might be. You never know. Um, or even just next to, um, certainly next to my other, um, probably, I say certainly next to my other tarot when I should say probably next to my other tarot. Yeah, I, okay. I like this a lot, actually. Um, especially because I only have a couple of tarot decks. You notice most of the decks in this category are oracle decks. So I can see myself, like, you know, I do a three-card tarot reading of some kind. I pull a little oracle card and get the message that goes with it. You know, don't be too proud to go back to shore. I mean, you know, or like, self-care. Drowning doesn't always require water stillness in calm waters everything becomes clear set sail on a new course so yeah okay so that's like a sidebar of <laughs> deck pairings um just wouldn't be wouldn't be a video from me if i wasn't dancing around tangents or even you know things like this you can use multiple oracles together why not i mean this uh, you you know was off my screen, but like, I like the way this works for me. So, um, yeah, I think I am going to keep the C melodies and let go of these, or like I said, I might just move them to the art pile. The other thing I want to mention, if you are looking at these little message decks, because, um, they're becoming really popular and, in my March favorites video, I'm going to show you another one that kind of surprised me that's like this. And I have another one. I have the dragon version of this as well. But this deck is, uh, I mean, these are mass market decks. So you can get them on Amazon or wherever you want. But this deck is $20 and this deck is $10 or maybe $12. Um, does it have a price on the box? It doesn't. But point being, this is a lot. These are a lot cheaper and how many cards are in here? Does it say 40? So there are a, a, like, you know, there are 11 more cards in here, but I don't know that that price difference merits how much, like the fact that there's some more cards in here, particularly when, you know, they're not rounded. They don't feel as easy to read or as well thought out as, as this deck does, unfortunately. That said, anytime I am talking about getting rid of a deck, I want to be really clear. I love everything Lucy Cavendish does. I think these are beautiful messages. And like I said, I may keep them for the sake of our projects and, um, you know, working in um, kind of my magical journals. But for pulling messages for me and for my heart, this one is a better fit for my personal collection. So I will have links to both of these and all of the videos I have shown, or all of the videos I've shown. I will not have links to all of the videos. You can click on the channel and get those. I will have links to all the decks I have shown. So that is my collection of Mermaid and Ocean decks. I hope you had fun taking a peek. Um, it looks like we have one to release. So, hey, you know, out of how many decks was that? Two, four, 
six, eight, nine-ish, uh, getting rid of one's not bad. That's like almost 10%. So, um, or more than 10% if it's one of nine. Oh, me and math. Mm, I shouldn't have pretended to do that. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not looking to unload decks like just for the sake of unloading decks, but I also don't want to be keeping them just because I have them. Um, I started this process of evaluating my deck collection in 2020. Um, it got set down for a while because some other things were going on in my life, but it is a time for me to pick it back up, and especially as I'm literally pulling every deck off my shelf to either put it in a box to move it, or in my backpack to use it right now, or potentially to release it to a new home, it's the right time to be asking myself, are these all decks I want to own? Are things, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody needs both of these in their collection, like even me, who likes to have everything in my collection. Um, I just don't need to have things that are similar. I want to be really mindful in what I keep and bring in. And, you know, I really believe like we have a responsibility to everything we own. And like, I just want to be taking better care of things. And I'm just looking to have a little bit less, even amongst my massive things. So that is it for Ocean and Mermaid decks. I will have all kinds of deck categories coming out over the next month or two or three. If there's anything you really want to see in particular, let me know because boy howdy do I have all kinds of things. I have pop culture decks, I have literary decks, I have chakra decks, I have self-love decks, I have artsy decks like good decks for artists and crafters, I have multicultural decks, I have goddess decks, I have healing decks, I have fairy decks, I have unicorn decks, I have plant decks. See where we're going here? And I have like 800 animal decks. I've already done a video on just the cats. So um, if there's a category you're like aching to see, let me know and I'll move it up the priority list. And otherwise, um, yeah, if you want to see the rest in the series, be sure to, of course, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell, hit the like button, all the YouTube things. They really do help me out. I am still a baby YouTube channel, but not for much longer. Um, I think I will be officially hitting um, like um, monetized status, or that's like a thing when you can run ads and um, have some more features unlocked. And I think this video might actually be the one that gets me into that next category. So it's very exciting. But at any rate, it's not really why I do that. I do YouTube for you guys. I do it for me because I love to talk and it's so much fun and I love sharing things with you and I love hearing from you. So be sure to leave me a comment and I'd love to know if you have any of these decks, if you like them, if you don't like them, if you want to get some, what you thinking. So that's all for now. I will see you hopefully later this week. Um, you can definitely start to count on regular content from me again. I know I've been quiet the last few months, um, especially in January and February and the first part of March, but just know that I was doing some deep work in my heart, making some hard decisions and um, getting ready to start a new journey. So here we go. And I can't wait for all of you to come with me. So remember, as always, Life can be stupid hard sometimes, but you are safe. You are loved. It is always darkest before the dawn. The dawn is coming. And I just wish you so much love and joy from the bottom of my heart. So have an amazing day. And until next time, may you always be determined to shine.